a huge hide. I never done an elk before, but it's just like a humongous deer. Into some type of garment. Hi, my name is Amor Rodriguez and this is Amor Rodriguez Survival. Welcome to my channel. Previously on Amos Rodriguez Survival. Bruceville Elk, Oregon Coast. Get a few. Okay, there it is. Okay, now I'm gonna try to load it into this fleshing beam. You can use a tree, a log. Uh, you can for this tool, just some rubber piping around this piece of metal that has a bit of an angle, it's not sharp, so it's kind of pushing away, trying to separate the layers. It's pretty frozen, if it's gonna hold, maybe like that. So, break off the salt. putting out there. Okay, sweating, even though it's freezing outside, uh, but not bad work. We'll, now that we have the hide uh, fleshed, we took all the skin off. There is still a little bit of the membrane in there, but we can take that off a bit later. Right now it will be too much effort to try to take the membrane off. What we're going to do is soak the hide on a backing solution, on a, it's an alkali. It's the opposite of the acidic. The alkali will help separate the fibers, making swell, swell. It gets really puffy. And you can see the difference between the grain, the hair attached to the grain layer. The hair and the grain layer, we're going to take it off with the same tool, the scraper. But it'll be really hard to do it with the height the way it is right now. Yeah, so this is uh, these flakes are potassium hydroxide KOH, and as I say, you want to add them to the water because I have a big hide. My ratio, I think, is going to be two cups of the flakes in a big barrel and put 40 gallons of water because then I think that'll be enough to get the hide really, really soaking. Okay, here are the first five gallons. Thirty gallons. There'll be a cup and a half. Let's get in there. Okay. Now we have the forty gallons of water there. And remember, if you're doing this just with a deer skin, you don't have to do as much. If you have ten of them, you might have to do as much. But I'm doing this because I want to throw an elk and deer hides in there. We'll see. Uh, so now it's the potassium hydroxide (KOH). It's those white flakes and it's a half a cup. Mm -hmm. 
to try to separate the grain layer, the hair, the grain layer from the leather fibers that we're looking for. It's like a, a glue type of thing that's holding everything together. I got it stirred up. Oh, the plane. I'll go get the hide. And this beautiful hide in here. One hole. The slow of the color, but I think I'd rather do clothing with it. Do something to wear. So I'm gonna put hair down. And I start pushing it in. In the back. In the, uh, whether you do it with ashes. So this is just one way of doing it. As I said, it has worked for me before to go throwing it in the river. Leave it there, tie it up to a tree, to a root for a few days. That has worked really well for me also. Ashes, it has worked really well for me. But this is a very reliable way to do it. You can let it sit there for three days, four days. Once the hair starts pulling, you can grain it. We're gonna come back and do it in the in the beam again. We'll I'll come back in a little bit because I just put the rawhide there. That's the beginning of the graining process, and uh, we we'll let it sit now. Yeah, the heights have been soaking about three days now. Freezing, 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 freezing. It's the elk. Did I see it right now? It'd be frozen. Oh yeah. yeah. The hair so the alkali can get into the grain, swell it up a little bit more in the neck. And I'll finish it tomorrow morning, hopefully before the rains come and start neutralizing and by the next day when it gets really cold I should have it neutralized and ready to hang it to freeze. So it can help the brains get into the fibers. Okay, now we're gonna ring the hide. Spring winter. Spring on the freezer too in the garage. Cause I couldn't work it, so some parts are getting drier. You can see them. They change color, they're turning into like raw hide. So to ring it, I look and I have the neck, the neck over here. That's the butt over there. So we're just holding that over. Making sure we include all those old parts, like the legs. Okay. 
Now we have this ring thing that's got some moisture. And I want the fibers to get really into it. that juice too. I'm trying to make that emulsify solution to get between the fibers. That way, if I work them while those are drying, then they stay in there and it allows the fibers to move independently and it turns into clothing. So basically what I'm doing is I'm gonna put this in here. You see, it's probably better if it's at chest level. But anyways, we start twisting. So I went one way and then I'm turning it the other way. And then we're gonna flip it a quarter of the way and do the same thing again. Go one way, squeeze it the other way. And then we move it another quarter to so then we'll be halfway there. Basically from, from 12 o'clock to six o'clock. And we'll do it again, back and forth on both sides. I'm gonna try to replicate what I was trying to do yesterday, is stringing. Um, we already ringed the hide, sewn up the holes, and now we're going to stretch in this big frame. It's a little on the big side, but instead of making another one, we can use what's already here. So. Okay. There's the neck, there's the corner. Yeah, all of this will stretch. Look. It's already starting to stretch. And the more I work it, the more it will stretch. So let's make a few more of these. So the neck, it's really hard to tan. Usually the side, the back is wider. I can start stretching this side even more, tighten this side, so this will slowly start stretching. And I will start tightening these ropes. And we made the loop knot so it can be easy to undo and tighten. We can use tools to, to pull like a shovel. We're gonna be using a lot of techniques to try to get a soft hide. Okay, got my brain water here. You see brain water? Rub it in. Thank <laughs> you. 
and that should do it. See, it's already soaking in. I have my elk hide. As you can see, it's snowy outside, it's super wet, really wet snow, it's really cold. I will try to soften this hide during that time. But if I work it outside the way it is, a bunch of wet snow, I will work it for days, it will not dry. So I just did this frame inside the house and I will work it in here because it's 70 degrees, so that will allow the hide to, to dry out while I'm working it. So now we're gonna start making a donut. So I'm gonna start rolling this side till I get to the half of it. And then I will start rolling this side into itself till I get to here. And basically I'm gonna end up with a big donut. ready to get stretched, it's ready to get pulled, you pull it and you stretch it and to try to get those areas out. Still has a lot of water on it, there is a bunch of, uh, there is still a bunch of moisture in it but that's pretty much bringing out the high. I got a bunch done, it's softening a bunch. This is the forebraining I do. It takes a lot of elbow grease, it takes a lot of pushing, pulling, but if your goal is to make clothing, try to put all the work in so you can end up with a really soft hide. But anyways, we'll restart back up tomorrow and we might be able to have it finished, at least the softening stage tomorrow. And then we'll take it to the smoke and smoke the whole hive for a couple hours, so we'll see. Hopefully this is the last of the softening day and then we get into the smoking part to finish this process. And the smoking ends in the tanning process, so 
well, washing it, smoking it, washing it. Then you end up with a big piece of smoke tan box. Cake. We're gonna take the rest, I'm gonna take the rest inside and use the cable to finish softening. Another late night here at the office. <laughs> Today we're going to uh, prep the bag. Now it's time to smoke this hide. We've been softening it, but right now it's like some parts are really amazing. Like really, really soft. So to prep this for smoking, we have to turn it into a bag. The first thing is to start cutting the edge. All of the outside is still pretty tough. Basically, I'm going to start cutting the edge to try to get to the soft part. Like in here, I can I have left the grain. And now all of this is soft and I'm cutting. Okay, so I'm almost done. Right all around. Round and around. There we go. Then you pinch it together. So yeah, I have the top here that I left open because it's really hard, so I might just clamp it. And, but the rest, since it's so soft, it's just gluing together with the, with the wood glue. Sometimes I pinch it to make it match, but you can pretty much just run, run the whole thing like that. So all this part is sealed. And the next step is to attach the funnel here. And you can also, you don't have to do this when smoking the hat, you can lay over like a sticks in a tippy style and smoke it like that. This just makes it really efficient. Really can smoke it really well, really quick. So that's why we're gonna go for this method. I'm making a fire for the coals. The coals are gonna go into this bucket I put some holes in it so it can have some oxygen coming in. Put a hole in the lid and put a pipe through it. And then I just need punk wood. Wood that has been micellated, wood that has been rotten in for a couple of years in the woods. And that will create a lot of smoke and we're going to smoke the hide now. So we're just gonna wait for some coals. We're gonna hang it up on a tree maybe. Uh, then punk wood on top of the coals, close it. I have made a skirt out of a old blue jean. We're going to staple the skirt to the hide, put a piece of bamboo, a stick to stretch it, and then we're going to smoke it for a couple hours. And that's the last step on the tanning process. This is the elk hide, looking really, really awesome. Very soft and pliable. Took a lot of elbow grease, but then I made a funnel with the jean cut a leg off. So I had big in one part and thinner at the bottom. We're going to put it into this hide now. Now the smoke can funnel from the tube here to the hide. So it has time to cool down so I don't risk burning my hide right here.
Okay, so this is the punky wood. On it all, almost gone, rotten, super soft. So that's what we want. We want the smoke to, I'll show you, to come out of the top like that. We want to be a constant rolling. If you can, you can have a water bottle, a sprayer, and keep this one cool. We're gonna go grab one just so I don't burn the blue jeans and therefore burn my hide. You can keep checking. Once you get the color you want, some people like a little lighter, you can put a lot of smoke into it, get it darker. But once the inside gets the color you want it, you can turn it around and do the other side. So let's check it. Yeah, just keep an eye so you don't ruin your hide. All the work you did, you don't want to burn it. That's why you spray the water on it. And uh, keep an eye inside to get the right color that you want. Okay, yeah, so we've gone through the process. This is the last part of this process, the smoking of the hide. This allows you to be able to wash it, makes it a little waterproof, and makes it so the animals don't eat it. Uh, it helps tanning the hide. It's a very important part of the process, so and it's the last one. So we're going through all the, the fleshing, the bucking, the graining. We neutralized it. And then we started softening the high with the brainings, uh, several brainings. It took several brainings to get it here. It was worth it because now it's really, really pliable and soft the way we want it. And in the next video, we're going to do a garment out of this. But it has to be when I get back from this trip. <laughs>
Awesome. Look at this beautiful hide. Smells amazing. Smells super awesome. And ready to do something cool with it. Super beautiful, guys. I mean, this is it right here. Absolutely gorgeous. I mean, now to make something cool with it. Make a cape. <laughs> awesome, guys. <laughs> really really pleased with it uh thank you guys for watching i appreciate every one of you for clicking in and checking out what i'm doing i hope you gain some insight on these processes they are really really special ways of making leather and now we will turn this into a garment i think so stay tuned for the next well elk video I'm going to turn this into some type of garment. I am very much looking forward to working with this leather. Cool. Okay, I would like to thank our Patreon members, Kevin Gatlin, Graves, Brent Dean, Carl Burke, Nicolas Metivier, Max Codino, Lisa Capa, Steven Rogers, Sergey Crow, Harold Tuttle, Nick Caudill, Jonathan Moore, Jacob Gill, Mick O'Hare, Alex Hudspeth, Lisa Sparrow, Ken Bruno, Scott Martin, Michael, Iris Tora Sarabia, Timo L, Denise Aware from Poverty, Vincent, Will Myers, Abel Resendez, Elisa Mesor, Jason Rain, Midgetman, Liam C, Thomas Casper, Green Gypsy Bird, just Kevin, Carlo Borella, and Waydale. If you've enjoyed this content and want to support Amos Rodriguez Survival, check out his Patreon here, the latest upload here, and don't forget to subscribe to Amos's channel right here. Amos Rodriguez Survival is brought to you by Fowler's Make Cream Mischief Studios. You can check out our channel there.